So we continue with general vector spaces. The next topic we want to look at is one of subspaces. So a subspace, uh, basically, which we usually, uh, keeping in mind that the general vector space is V, then we usually use the symbol W to represent a subspace. Okay, and we call W a vector space, a subset of a vector space V, and it's called, so as you understand, in, in in set theory, just like what a subset is, which is a smaller set within a large set, in a similar way, a subspace is a smaller space within a larger within a large space. So we say that, um, for instance, the subset W uh, of a vector space V is called a subspace of V if W itself is a vector space under the addition and scalar multiplication defined on V. Okay, so the so it has the same operations of addition okay so the addition it's defined under addition and scalar multiplication same rules same operations and under these uh, it itself um, is a valid vector space okay so um, the uh, so if w is in fact a um, a vector uh, a subspace so if W is a subspace of V. Okay. Now, of course, in this we assume that V itself is a is a valid vector space, so it satisfies the ten axioms. Now, if W is a subspace of V, then W inherits a lot of the lot of the axioms from V itself. The only two axioms that we actually require um, for something to be a valid vector space are the closure the closure axioms so the closure under addition um, as you know closure under addition it means that if u and v belong to w not v now they already belong to they automatically belong to v, v if they belong to w because w is in v so if u and v belong to w then u plus v also belongs to W. So that's the closure under addition. And the second one is closure under scalar multiplication. So this you will know these are these are not automatically inherited as I will show you with some examples. So for instance if we have uh, U belongs to V uh, W sorry then KU Okay, also belongs to W. Okay, so uh, this is not, this is the closure. So it's not different. It's the same thing. The only thing is now we are looking at where before we were closed under V. Now we're looking at closure um, under W itself. So let's look at some examples, and things will become a bit more clear once we do that. Okay. Right. So, um, lines through the origin, uh, for instance, are subspaces of R2 uh, and of R3. What that means is, for instance, if you look at, um, the, in three dimensions here, and a line that goes through the origin, some straight line, an infinite line, of course, and it's in R3, uh, for instance, for the sake of argument, it's a line in through the origin, sorry, okay. So it's it's it of course belongs to this is we are in R3. Now this is a subspace of R3, this straight line. So if we look at vectors that live on this line, for instance, here's u, okay, then uh, if I were to multiply u by k, for instance, it might make it make this ku. Just for the sake of argument. So it might make it longer. But does it stay on the same line? It does. So let's say this line is the subspace W. It's a subspace of R3. Um, so it would be a subset because all lines, uh, you know, all straight lines in R3 are, of course, vectors that are in themselves in, um, in R3. However, let us, look, let, us, let us home in on this um, a particular straight line, for instance, okay, uh, in R3. Any straight line in R3 can be considered as a subspace of R3, um, 
And what we really mean is this is an infinite line and there are vectors that live on the line. So if u and v, for instance, here, um, say for the sake of argument, that here's, um, this is u and suppose that um, this vector, uh, let's say, let's draw another one here because, for instance, on the line, suppose this is the vector u and here from this head to the, uh, ahead is, the vector v then the vector u plus v okay uh, is uh, this vector here for instance it will not uh, even the you know even if you use the parallelogram law because both vectors are on the same line they're essentially parallel or I mean they have the same slope and precisely um, it's not possible for you to accept for extending it so they're both added on this way so it is closed under addition because the the resultant uh, u plus v is also on the line and similarly it's also closed under uh, scalar multiplication because the 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 scalar multiple is also uh, still on the the line the same could happen in r2 for instance as well so uh, this is a valid subspace uh, of r3 let's go to another example okay so let's look at the uh, subspace uh, a subspace of m n by n okay subspace m n n which means the subspace of n by n matrices okay so the subspace of n n by n matrices now uh, let's look at a subspace so we're looking at the vector space v is m n n so v is m n n so the vector space v is m n n now we're looking at a subspace subspace w which we will call uh, this uh, the space of symmetric n by n n by n sorry n by n symmetric matrices okay we all know that we all know that n by n matrices not all n by n matrices are symmetric matrices but there is a subset of this space which are all those particular matrices that are symmetric we can construct we can consider that as a subspace now is it a valid subspace in other words the space of n by n symmetric matrices is it a valid subspace of m n n well if it is then it must satisfy the closure axioms so let's check the first one if i add uh, a symmetric matrix to another symmetric matrix addition of two symmetric matrices leads to a symmetric matrix we know this as a as a rule in fact um, equals a symmetric matrix this is true in fact okay so it's closed under addition so if i were to add two symmetric matrices i would get another symmetric matrix 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 uh, if I were to multiply a symmetric matrix by a scalar, uh, then it's, um, of course, uh, k times a, a symmetric matrix, okay, results in a symmetric matrix, k times a symmetric matrix equals a symmetric matrix, of course. And that's a fact. I mean, you can you can do this by example if you like, just to uh, think about it. But in fact, these are laws, these are rules uh, we've already studied in matrices, which is when you add two symmetric matrices, you get a symmetric matrix. And when you multiply by a scalar, the uh, the scalars multiply multiplied equally and in, into in the same way into the entire matrix, every entry. So therefore, it cannot disturb the symmetric structure of a matrix. So therefore, this is a valid subspace uh, of M N N. Okay, let's look at it. another example. Let's uh, consider the subspace. Um, let's consider the subspace uh, of R two. Okay, um, the set of all points uh, x y, set of all points x y in R two. Okay, in R two for which x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. So this means we're talking about the first quadrant, okay? So 
we're talking about the first quadrant. Um, so in other words, if you look at this, we're talking about this area here where both x and y are greater than or equal to zero. Now, is this a valid subspace of R2? Well, let's consider, um, let's consider the following. If, um, let's check the closure under addition. Well, if we add two vectors um, that are both positive, we get a positive vector. So, no issues there. It seems to be closed under addition. Um, let's see closed under scalar multiplication. Well, very simple. If I were to multiply any vector v, for instance, any vector v by v equals, for the sake of argument, 1, 1. And if I were to multiply it by minus 1, uh, that would become minus 1 times v would become minus 1 minus 1, which means it would end up over here. And that is not in the first quadrant. In fact, both values become negative. So that is not in W then. It's not greater than X is not greater than 0 and Y is also not greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, therefore, scalar multiplication is it's not closed under scalar multiplication, therefore not a subspace. So it's not a subspace. Now we have talked about this uh, as well in classes. Um, is the uh, subspace uh, subspace C minus infinity to plus infinity, okay, which is a subspace of F uh, of all functions. So these are continuous functions, continuous functions, okay, and these are all functions, of course, F is all functions. So, so the set of continuous functions is a subspace of f. It is closed under um, uh, under addition. When you add two continuous functions, it gives you a continuous function. And multiplying a continuous function by a scalar by any number is not going to change the function in terms of its um, inherent and continuity property. So therefore, it is a valid subspace. So it's a valid subspace of f minus infinity to plus infinity. Um, another interesting, sorry, uh, similar subspace of f minus infinity to plus infinity are the, uh, is c1 minus infinity to plus infinity. It's the space of functions that have continuous first derivatives. So if you were to add two such uh, functions or two such vectors, two such functions, um, the result would still be uh, continuous uh, first order derivatives. And similarly, scalar multiplication has no effect either. And in the same way, this can be extended to C2 minus infinity plus infinity, which is the space of uh, second, uh, second continuous second derivatives, and then and so on till, in fact, C infinity, which is the space of infinitely uh, infinite derivatives, infinite derivative. Okay. Um, so this is all, these are all valid subspaces of F, in fact. All right. Another interesting subspace is the subspace of polynomials, of F, by the way, F minus infinity to plus infinity, which is the space of functions. Um, a subspace of polynomials, okay, of degree, okay, less than or equal to N. And this is very interesting but something that's not necessarily obvious. So the space, the subspace is defined as a space subs uh, of polynomial functions which are of degree less than or equal to n. Now, why didn't we say n? Uh, well, because, for instance, if you were to take, now we're talking about any polynomials, all right, because they're a subspace of f, which they could be any degree polynomial. So this is not a p3 or p2 or p4 or pn uh, space. It is, in fact, any of any polynomials, in fact. And very simply, if, if we say that Pn, um, the I mean, it's the space of all polynomials of degree n, where n could be anything, is a subspace of f, we can be, uh, we will lose um, the addition axiom, closure under addition. Why? Because, look, if you take two quadratics, like 1 plus 5x minus 7x squared, Okay, this is one polynomial in P2, and here's another one, 7 plus, minus 2x uh, plus 7x squared. So if you were to take these two polynomials, 
and you add these two polynomials, you will end up with 8 uh, plus 3x, which is a first order polynomial. So in other words, adding two polynomials can end up reducing the degree of the, the, the polynomial resulting could be a lower order polynomial or lower degree polynomial. Therefore, it is safer to say that the subspace of polynomials of degree less than or equal to n, okay? Not equal to n, in fact, but less than or equal to n. If we were to say Pn directly only is a subspace of minus infinity to plus infinity, that would be a little bit of a problem because we could lose the, we could find counterexamples in, uh, and, and make the closure under addition fail, in fact. Just for completion, I'm saying that, um, uh, that, uh, Polynomials of the degree n or less form a subspace of f minus infinity plus infinity, okay? And we call this pn.